Hey everybody, welcome to the Silver Bayonet Adventure. We're on to mission number three from the Silver Bayonet solo campaign in Osprey's new game of Gothic Napoleonic Horror. Um, and yeah, Tianente Ramirez and his group have managed to investigate the chapel, defeat all the living dead that were there, and make off with the two holy icons, a silver cross and a weird candelabra. Um, and they're trying to return back to uh, enemy lines. Night is falling in the forest, and before they can make it out, they're forced to set up camp while strange noises kind of crackle out in the woods uh, and the troll begins to hunt. So uh, this is going to be the group basically camp for the night, having to deal with weird fey creatures that are now hunting them through the darkened forest. So we'll share the table, share the mission and get this underway. So here we are set up for the troll hunts. Now this is played on a two by two uh, gaming area. The center of which is placed a campfire and campsite and no terrain is placed typically within 10 inches of the middle. There are four clues, one, two, three, four, each 10 inches from the center uh, in a cross pattern. And the rest of the um, table is set up to be sort of like a dense forest where we've camped for the night. So having secured the treasures of the chapel, you begin the long march back to friendly territory. However, before you can make it to the edge of the forest, you start to feel eyes watching you. It's with great trepidation that you eventually call a halt for the night. Posting a double watch, you just hope that you can get some sleep and escape this accursed forest. You have to randomly select two group members of the group, so de-aiding, re-rolling anything that's not appropriate. So seven is Ramos, which is you, and then one, which is the boss. Ramirez, they will be posted as guards. So they start the game uh, anywhere within five of the campfire uh, and on guard. So let's say uh, you were hanging out over here next to the wine and you were watching or chopping wood for the campfire. The remainder of their team will be placed in contact with a sleeping area as they are sleeping and not able to activate and they have to be within three of the fire. So we'll say that the Vatican members, this is their tent. The more veteran members of the company are this tent, and if you're touching a sleeping area, you're asleep. Members of Deployed place two goblins on two randomly determined clue markers. So we'll do a D8 and go clockwise from the top, number two. So there's a goblin over here. And then re-rolling the same result, number three, a goblin in the woods over here. Now, goblin is kind of a catch-all term for any wingless fairies or trickster sort of like fey in Europe. And these guys are kind of small and easy to kill, or sorry, and, and weak, but uh, not very easy to kill. They are only allergic to cold iron, of which I have absolutely none in my warm band. So they are damage resistance for allergy to iron. Uh, they have a move of, I believe, 6, plus 0, plus 0 for melee and accuracy, defense 15 to hit, courage plus 5, and health 8. Uh, they're hypnotic, though, inimical to technology, so my guns stop working if they get within 6 of me. Master of cover, plus 1 saves from shooting, nimble, and weakened by faith. So, uh, the, on, the, on the upside, basically, if I have anything that's um, faithful, I can... I can actually hurt them and that I have in, in spades. Oh, they're minus three to hit me in melee which is a hilarious result but I have a very hard time actually killing them. Furnace sleep model activates they get to add the round number plus their courage to a TN check 16 to try and wake up. As soon as they wake up they get two fatigue markers and um, can operate as normal. If someone attacks them they get fatigue markers uh, as if they were um, Double fatigue. You can exit after turn five, um, and random things happen. There, there could be all kinds of things out there at the end of the game. Uh, on turns one, two, and four, their goblin gets randomly placed at a center point of random table edge. But at the end of turn three, the goblins are bushwhacking for a troll, and it arrives. And that's this guy over here. Five plus three melee, accuracy plus one, defense 13, courage plus three, 20 health. He's allergic to fire because he's a troll. Damage reduction four. Large rock hurler, very strong, and has a hand weapon. Hurler means it has a 12-inch range gun and damages with a power die, which is crazy. Very strong means he's plus two, I believe, in melee damage. All right, well, we're awake with some people, and there are goblins here, uh, and we do have some fire. <laughs> so, but we're within six, unfortunately, with this one, which means that it's it, I, I can't even use my guns. My guns just stop working. So I think the boss just goes over and just starts crushing skulls with his bare hands. 
So he's gonna move. And Ash will make a melee attack. Now we have a skill, a power, and a monster die because uh, the man, the legend that is Wachtmeister Breiner is still alive, or at least his, you know, his body's been reanimated by uh, <laughs> by Rubio. So let's do a strike. We have to hit a 15 here. We are plus two melee. Blam. Ugh. Well, that didn't work. That's not even close to good. It'll always fight back. It's minus three though, because of my blessed candelabra. Uh, so that's a four. Um, and that does not even come close to my 14. So both sides are fatigued. I think we try and wake up Rubio. He's plus four courage, plus one, five because of the round number. We have to do a 16 here. Well, that'll do. So he's awake. He's got two fatigue tokens on him. But he's up. I'm gonna do the smart thing. Light some oil and torches, because there's a troll, a troll coming here eventually. And then I think he's going to just take a walk and start investigating. So he's gonna go with six and walk back here. Get behind Briner. And then I guess we try and wake up one of the sentries at plus. Well, that might do it. Uh, that's one. 11, 12 for the turn number. What's your courage? Your courage is exactly plus two. So plus two means uh, 14. We need two more. Do I spend it out to reroll this? I think it's worth waking somebody up. We do. So two fatigues, and then you're gonna take a walk over here and go investigate this thing. And let's see what we find. Let's see if we can get one of these clue markers out of here. It is revealed to be the Queen of Spades. A bag of iron nails. All the investigating figure shooting attacks count as cold iron for the rest of the game. Sweet. Well, I'll take that. All monsters activate. And we start the closest to the furthest. So over here, this goblin at minus three, because he's weakened by faith, because I have great faith on my, um, my, whatchamacallit. Actually, even just the uh, silver cross that he's carrying, his magic item. Uh, minus three, so eight becomes a five. That's definitely a miss. And then the boss can strike back. He's at plus, he has one fatigue token, so minus one of this, so he's at plus one. That's a nine, 10. And he'll become, this goblin will become double fatigued. Sorry, he needed a 14 because of the fatigue marker on the goblin. Uh, he'll become double fatigued and he'll stay single fatigue because of indefatigable. And goblin comes running up towards this sleeping sapper. All right, rest of the turn. Can we wake anybody else up? So, Briner, wake up. Oh yeah, you do, 17, 18 actually. So you're double fatigued, but you're just gonna walk over here and crush this guy. Plus zero, looking for a 15. That's a seven, so you miss. Right, so strike back, now you do not have a holy icon. Oh yes you do, you're walking my Sir Briner. Uh, so minus three to hit, yeah, it doesn't hit you at all. Both tired, can we wake up the sapper? He's a 16 naturally, oh my gosh, so he's awake. Mm, what does he want to do now? He has, Delgado's got a strange candelabra, which makes him blessed. Uh, and that's really it. So I think he's actually going to go and try and investigate as well. He's going to go three, six to there. And then do an investigate action on this clue. See what we can find. It's the king of spades. Ideal firewood. All the investigating figures melee attacks count as fire for the rest of the game. Sweet is also a blaze. This uh, little grenadier, 16. Nope, stays sleeping. And then last but not least over here, I think you're just gonna go bodyguard. Like so. Out round two, uh, at the end of turn one, place another goblin at the center point of a ram table edge. So D8, clockwise from the top. Seven, right over here. It's Goblin Town. So that is, we found some iron nails. So guess what? We remove all our fatigue markers now, which is nice. And three models get to go. We have one who's still asleep. Uh, yeah, put those nails to work, buddy. You're gonna step back towards the fire. So you're outside of six because he turns off his gun and we're gonna blast him. 15, effectively 16 because he uh, moved before he fired. So plus one to this. Pa! I'll take it. Cold iron shot, so he's fired. Does nine damage, because the musket uses um, the accuracy die. Poof, and just offs the goblin. Have eight health and no damage reduction from allergy. Cold iron. Well, then I think we go with, hmm. You have a torch. It doesn't help against the goblin. Mm, what, do you, what can you find here, Rubio? Take a walk back here, and then investigate. No target test for investigating this time around, which is nice. It's just whatever this card is. 
if I could pick it up. Ha! The Ace of Spades. The only card I need. Ideal Firewood. Oh, already on fire. He already had a torch. And then a third model. We'll try and wake up this century. Ha! That's a plus two, so 13, 14, 15 for the round number, and he is Courage plus two, because he is rank one, tier one rather, uh, which means he's awake, and he's gonna fall back. I guess we're gonna fall back this way, towards where that clue is. Oh, goblins get to go, so the first goblin, get, I will do God, we'll do Briner first, attacks Briner. He's minus three from the holy symbol. 14 goes down to an 11, which means he misses. Uh, and instead of striking back, Briner's actually just gonna push back and step away. This goblin against my boss. Five plus five is 10, minus three for the holy symbol for the silver cross. Makes it a seven, also misses. The boss is also gonna fall back. The goblin, so I think over here, you're gonna take a shot into this goblin. So skill dice, 15 he needs. That's a 15, seven damage, minus four for damage reduction. It means that it has five health left. Unfortunately, everybody's technology is kind of messed up here. So I think the boss is just gonna charge. Yeah, no, Briner's gonna charge back in. Now that guy's taking a shot. He's plus two melee, so he needs to hit a 13 here on both dice. That'll do it, and it uses power plus one, uh, which means 11 minus four is seven health. He kills that goblin too. Then the boss jumps in and attacks. Plus two as well. Uh, that's a 13 goes to 15, so hits. Power dice with his hand weapon. Uh, so it's only five damage down to one. So it has seven remaining because of the damage reduction. Then the sapper jumps in. Both sides are tired now, so he only needs to hit a 14 with his hand weapon. That's a 12. Uh, plus one is a 13. We'll reroll the skill die because this will kill him if I hit. That's a 13, 14 for his melee, which hits. 10 damage. Um, minus four is six. Exactly enough to kill. Sorry, seven. Ah, he has seven left. He's got one left. The goblin fights back against the boss too, sorry. Minus three, so 10 goes to seven, and then minus three, 12, versus his 13. So both miss. Ah, no, sorry, that holy icon doesn't keep him from not being hit. He'll actually take five. Uh, he has 12, which means, or he has health of 10, which means he has five remaining. He got stabbed. Round two, another goblin appears. On two, right over here, uh-oh. It's getting thick with goblins, and next turn the troll shows up. Down to three, end of this round is gonna be bad, so we don't have a lot of choices here. I think we go first with you, and you're gonna reload and shoot that goblin that just appeared, but it's obscured. Fire a shot, fire that blunder bar, or that uh, musket, you're not within six of a goblin. That's an 11, which will miss, 12 total. Nice try. It would have been cool if you'd blast another one. What's left to remain? Uh, I think we go with you. And you're going to swing on this goblin. See if you hit. You have a melee of plus one. That's the wrong die. That's a 12, 13 for your melee. We get there and we can't reroll. So going back in with the goblin. Looking for a 13. That's a 14. Does four more damage. He's down to one. Ooh, Delegato didn't like that. It's the boss trying to finish off this goblin. Plus two, uh, he only needs a 14 now because it's fatigued. That'll do it. So plus two is a 15, 10 damage. Reduced by four is six, it finishes him. And he'll come in to fight the sapper. Uh, doesn't really change much, so he's just gonna get attacked. Uh, that's a 10. He's fatigued, so he needed a 12, it misses. Well, the troll's gonna arrive this turn, so I think we head to the middle and try and uh, try and keep ourselves alive. <laughs> so we're gonna go six and then a dash on an 11. Uh, so only a total of eight with um, Rubio, because he doesn't get a far dash, but we gotta get away from the edge here because we don't know where this troll's gonna appear from. Reload and walk six, because they can hear the crashing starting, the crashing through the woods. Uh, you're just gonna walk Six, back into the middle near the fire. Both of you will light up your torches. Actually, sorry, you reloaded, but you'll light up your torch. Cold iron, but I definitely have torches on all my um, grenadiers. Briner's just gonna go stand in the middle here and be like, I am here to, ah, you know what, he's a monster hunter. He's gonna go walk over here and grab this last 
thing. The troll appears on this side, Briner's happy. Final card, it's the Jack of Spades. A small gold ring, add a power or skill dice. <laughs> Let's go power die to the pool. Let's get around three. Here we go. <laughs> See where the trolley arrives. It arrives right behind us. So right over here in the middle of the table. That makes sense. A little fee fi fo fum. It's not trolls, it's ogres technically, but you know, trolls and ogres. Well, we have fire, but we don't have fire guns. It's damage reduction four. You're gonna get eaten in a second if you don't go. So you're gonna reload and just try and hurt this troll before it all goes terribly wrong. Defense 13. Ah, oh, that's not gonna hit. <laughs> Blast wildly. The boss is gonna jump in here and try and kill all this goblin before he dies. It's two hitting a 15. Uh, that's a six, 11, 13. Doesn't quite get it. Breaks back at minus three though because of his silver icon. So an 11 becomes an eight and misses his defense of 14. I think just Ramos goes and he's just gonna step over the fire here. And try and heal on Sapper Delgado. He does for 10, 13. So he'll heal a three and go to four. Those are three models. So then um, the goblin gets to go and attack, I guess, Delgado because he's most wounded. Only a seven though and he misses. And then it's troll time. Walks up six. And starts to eat this poor grenadier. Plus three to his melee stat. And he hit a 13. Uh, that's only a three. He misses somehow. I'll just duck back. I'm not gonna even try and hit you later. <laughs> I'm fatigued. Remaining models. Briner's just gonna do a do a move run. So six plus he gets to go ten, eight, and two more. It's monster hunting time. Hello, everybody. You're gonna light your torch and then move to here because you could distract next turn. Get while well, the getting's good. Go wave your torch at him. <laughs> you could do this, trooper. Plus one fight, hitting a 13, 12 because it's fatigued. Yeah, that didn't do it. Uh, that's a four. It fights back. <laughs> 10, 13, definitely hits for six, eight damage. Knocks him down to two. Three, Grandiers have 11, but he's very strong. Oh, Delgado, try and kill that goblin. See if you can. Huh. Whoa, 919. Okay, well, that's not bad. Uh, and you have fire, which doesn't do anything. It's minus four, so five damage. That goblin has three left. That goblin's gonna swing back at you though. Looking for a 13, that's a 12. No, it doesn't get him. Round four, start round five, another goblin appears. On one. Oh my God, the goblin's just streaming through here. Well, I mean, we have torches. <laughs> so I think we're gonna go distract to put a fatigue token down, because he doesn't even have a loaded gun. Uh, then move in. An attack on a 12. So this flaming torch. That's a that's pretty good. That's a 14. Improvised weapon only does power dice minus one damage. Um, but yeah, it's it's gonna at least hurt him. <laughs> so that's eight from nine, which means he's got 12 left. He does strike back, and as we know, this troll is now angry. He's only uh, melee plus two right now, though, because he's uh, tired, and that's an eight, so he misses. That means he's now double tired. So does he smack uh, smack back? He's minus two, so a 13 becomes an 11 to hit. Uh, that's a eight, nine, but we can reroll the power die because we found that gold ring. Uh, 14, I'll take that. That's gonna be six more damage because he's minus one um, for being with an improvised weapon. So that means six goes away, he's got six left. That's it, all three Grenadiers did not take down the troll. The troll fights back against that Grenadier and gets a plus two, actually plus one. So 12 goes to 13, that hits nine damage, 11 damage total, and just crushes him. Well, monster phase, uh, start with the troll, I guess. It just attacks, it's at minus two, doesn't hit. Um, so he gets to fight back, he's tired now, so it'll be minus one, so just a straight dice roll, trying to hit an 11. He does, and that's damage minus one, finishes off the troll. <laughs> This goblin's gonna attack Delgado for a 12, doesn't quite hit him. Oh no, it doesn't quite hit him, he hasn't fought this turn, he needs a 13. Um, and then Delgado can fight back at plus one. That's a 9, 11, 12, doesn't hit. And they both become fatigued. Steps in, attacks Delgado as well. 
Fatigued only needs a 12. Gets it. Ooh, 10 damage. He's down. It's all Goblin Town over there. So we're rapidly running out of guys. The boss goes, I guess, and attacks that one goblin. Uh, that is a... It's tired, so it is 9 plus 4. Uh, is a 13, needs a 14 though, and misses. Back at minus three, doesn't hit at all, and then rolls a nine. We go with Briner, and he's just gonna go three. You know what? Do they just start exiting? They gotta get any table edge. I think discretion's a better part of Valor here. We don't care about killing goblins. Briner's just gonna go three. No, 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 we care. Three, six, uh, and then try and run. We don't, so we only go eight. So that means we can go around this way. And we won't quite make it to that goblin, but it'll snap to us. If we stay, if we don't get too close. Inquisitor's just gonna go backwards, go high with these two grenadiers, because he's a lover, not a fighter. And then it's new turn. So turn six, we can leave now. We've killed the troll. Uh, let's see if we can do some damage. First things first, reload. Take a shot at that goblin. Rock that 15. Doesn't do it, 13, 14. Shot would have been nice. Uh, then we'll go with the boss. He'll take a swing at plus two. That's a 10, 13, misses. Both become fatigued and Briner will step in and attack and get an 11, 12, 13 and miss. It fights back and also misses at minus three because it's only a 10. And sorry, the one that was attacking Delgado missed as well. Not Delgado, um, the boss. Remaining activations, the two goblins fights, the goblin attacks and gets a 15. Minus three is a 12 though, so it misses. You need a 14, 13, because he's tired. And then, uh, actually he's minus four, because he's tired. And then the boss can fight back at minus two. Uh, so that's a 10, 12 total. Uh, minus one for being fatigued is 11. He hits. And then that goblin attacks Briner at minus three. Uh, so 11. He needs a 12 right now because he's fatigued. Sorry, 13 because he's fatigued. That's an 11 minus four, so nope. <laughs> and then Briner can fight back. He'll be a plus one overall for being fatigued. And that's a 17. I'll take it. Uh, so 17, great weapon goes to 11. Minus four is seven. It's got one health left. Well, that looks like turn for the goblins. These two guys are just gonna leave <laughs> and say bye. They'll walk off the board. Too much against goblins now. Turn seven. Uh, we can go with half rounded down. So one model. We'll just do the boss. Plus two to hit. Needs a 15. Nope, that's a nine. Uh, the goblin fights back and gets a 15, which hits and does power 10 damage. Oh, God. The boss took a hit and went down to... Th uh, he's got armor, so reduces the damage by one. So 10 goes to nine. He's got four left. Oh, jeez. The goblins go. It attacks again. They're both fatigued now, so it's hitting at minus four. Uh, that will be a miss. That's a uh, 14. He needs a 13 because of the fatigue. And then minus one to his own stat, so minus four. That's an 11. Holy icon and the uh, alert allergy to stuff that isn't magic. He's just going to back off his reaction because he wants this guy to shoot him. And this one's going to attack Briner. Uh, also with a holy icon, so minus three. Uh, so that's us eight, which misses, and then Briner fights back. There's plus two still. He doesn't fight yet this turn. Uh, that's a seven, eight, nine. Does nothing. So then Briner's activation. He's just gonna swing again at plus one now. Uh, nine, ten total. Uh, misses, and it fights back. That's a fourteen minus four it is a ten, so it misses too. And then we reload and we shoot the unengaged goblin. So he's fatigued, so his defense is minus, he fought twice, so actually minus two, so he needs a 13 to hit here. <laughs> nope, that's a seven. We're not doing it. Uh, new turn, turn eight, Let's reload and do it again. So, takes the smoke away, shoots out two and goblin. It's not fatigued now though. Won't do it, it's only a nine, 10. And then they go, this one attacks Briner at minus three. That's a seven, which misses. Briner fights back at plus two. There we go, 16, that's 10 damage, minus four is six, kills it. This one comes towards the boss, because he's more wounded. And takes a stab at minus, oh god, three, 14, hits him for seven damage. Takes down Ramirez. Too, too brave. Well, Briner gets to go, he steps in, makes his swing at plus one, because he's fatigued. 
Uh, that'll do though. 18 does 7, 8 damage. Minus 4 is 4 and kills it. More monsters arriving. That is the game. Everybody just walks off the board at the end. So uh, the Inquisitor and um, Brian are making off with two of the Grenadiers. They slay the troll and all the goblins. So plus one experience for investigating three or more clue markers. Plus one for killing three or more goblins. Plus two for killing the troll. Plus one experience of at least two soldiers exit the table, uh, which are done. Plus one experience of at least four soldiers exit the table. We did that too. And then plus one of six made it. So we got all but the bottom one there. And that means we get plus one, two, three, four, five, six. So someone's not getting a bonus experience. You might just be dead. So Ramirez, how'd you do? Four, you are slow recovery. Start the next game at minus three health. Another important one, of course, the Sapper Delgado. How'd he do? Four, also minus three health. And then our poor, <laughs> just full recovery. Totally fine, Ortiz just walks away without any damage. He's the one who'll get the one experience. Everyone else will get two, which puts Ramos at eight, Torres at two, Ortiz at five, and then Ramirez and Rubio both at eight with Briner and Delgado at six each. So that does not give us any level ups at the moment because we need to get to 10, but the next game, uh, both Ramirez and Rubio, and I think Ramos, uh, if they survive and I get some bonus experience, will hit tier two and gain either a health or a new attribute. So we got another Silver Bayonet adventure concludes, barely making it out, Lieutenant um, Ramirez and his group. Uh, he had big chunks pulled out of him, so for this next mission, he will start with minus three health, as will Delgado. And that's a problem, because they're actually carrying the relics, which will be very important in the final mission in this solo campaign, the last mile, as they attempt to return back to friendly territory with their sort of like... I guess, um, mission complete, having found these relics. So we'll see for that one in two weeks. Till then I'm Ash, up we're getting. Hey there, I hope you enjoyed that video. There are tons of other games all recorded for you to watch. Click over to my channel page if you haven't already and have a look to the dozens of playlists full of videos. I guarantee you'll discover a game you haven't seen played before. I put out new videos seven days a week and every day is themed to a different genre as I continue to explore the wider world of gaming. Of course, none of that's possible without you, the viewer, so click a like and subscribe if you'd like to stay on top of what's happening here daily. My two kids and I are massively grateful to be able to have the flexibility of this job so I can always maximize my time with them. If you want to support me continuing to put out this content, it's only possible because of my amazing backers on Patreon who support the studio, equipment, and model cost, as well as being how I make the bulk of my living. You can also help out by buying a t-shirt through Spreadshirt, a measuring gauge or widget from Death Ray Designs, or buying one of my games and supplements, like Last Days, Gamma Wolves, and Blaster. As a way of showing my appreciation, patrons get early access to new games and supplements that I write throughout the course of the year. Huge thanks for watching, it really does help out, and happy gaming.